One more episode to go before the end of this arc. Poker fans, we're here to talk about episode 66 of Pokemon Horizons. It's the semi-final episode before the end of this arc, and then we can start the next one. So, at this point, I think I'm like five episodes behind schedule, which is great. I'm almost there. You know, we're making good progress. I might actually be able to finish this stuff by the end of the week if we keep this going. All right? Now, let's talk about this good-ass episode. Listen, I am so happy. I am so glad that after a two-month break because of my situation... I come back, and every episode has actually been good. This is probably the best finale out of the three artists. <laughs> actually, no. Not even it might be. This is the best finale so far out of any of the arcs that we've had to this point, okay? The first season's finale was a little mediocre, and the last one was fucking ass, okay? You guys know me. I hated the finale of the previous arc to where I was worried about when this new arc started, right? So, I... <laughs> I'm generally surprised and generally happy. It might just be, like, because I'm excited to be watching the show again that I'm actually enjoying it a little bit more. But I'm, I'm going to take away those rose-colored glasses for now. I just think that they actually are improving in terms of their writing skills. Because this was a good-ass episode. Okay? I love the tension that they were building. I kind of admit I would have liked this to be extended out a little longer so that you can actually get time to, to do more sequences and stuff like that. Like, you could have had, like, Penny and Agate... Go in and I like a, a hacking versus anti-hacking like matchup there while the dot was out here dealing with the fucking Metacham and and you could have given Liko more time to deal with Onyx and you could have given like Roy some more time to deal with with Sango like you could have you could have expanded this a little bit I'm just saying it could have been done but with what they created I thought that was legit cool I I love having Penny here okay she I'm, <laughs> I I know I saw my boy Armin. Is around. Okay, he might make an appearance in the next episode, and I'm hyped to see him. Okay, that's one of the things I'm looking forward to in the next episode is that my boy Arvin's gonna be there. Okay, I hope they don't do my man dirty because he's my favorite character from Scarlet and Violet. So, <laughs> so I'm really hoping. I'm really hoping they do him right. I I hope they do him a solid. Right, but as for like Penny, I love the fact that she's integrated into the story in such a different way than she was in the actual games. Right, because in the games. She is a hidden character uh, for the majority of the time. Like, most of the time you interact with her, she is playing, like, a two-faced character to try to, like, try to get you to do her dirty work for her, right? Um, and, like, obviously you get the backstory and all that stuff. But I'm glad that she's more involved and she's showing, like, the other side of her that we rarely got to see in the games, right? Which is her, her proficiency to be a technological genius, right? I, 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 I kind of wish... That she showed up, she would have been able to put up a bigger fight, right, against Agate. Because, again, I'm not gonna harp on Agate this time because she actually did something. She hacked into the computer's like network, right, to be able to pull the files uh, about Tropicals, right. So she did something. Um, I kind of just wish that there would have been something else in there, like, like you know, like they do in those like, like they do in like detective movies or like detective shows where you got like the hacker and like the expert hacker from the FBI or like, or some government agency and they're like they're going at it and you just see lines of code. Going. I, I, I would have loved to have seen something like that. But I guess it's something for the future. Hopefully, maybe they'll do something. I'm just surprised because like I said, we haven't seen the guy to do anything. So in my mind, I'm like, did she even actually hack into this thing or was it Spinel and she just had to like plug something in and then go from there. Like I just, I don't know, right? I'm still hesitant to, to call her like worthwhile for the team, but at least she did something in this episode. Dot is the only one that wasn't able to defeat, uh, you know, her opponent because technically speaking, she was there to like try to bake the machine, right? Um, and then like got it just dipped with Zatu, which is cool. We finally see her, her flying Pokemon partner and whatever, because everybody has a fucking like, they have like their main partner, and then they have like I guess the flying teleporter or or whatever. The only one that doesn't have that is Sago, and that's because fucking Glalie floats, so she can just fly away on him. But <laughs> uh, I love 
I love Roy and and the fact that like he was trying to avoid destroying anything in the school. So like he took the fight outside, and then Liko was out here fighting Onyx. And, and the only only weird thing I want to bring this up because I, maybe I'm misremembering the past like arcs and shit, but I'm pretty sure that we have heard them say their names before. I'm pretty sure they've heard them calling each other or have at least mentioned who they are, right? Because they know who Amethio and Spinel are, right? So I'm surprised that for some reason it feels like they're reintroducing like, oh, I'm Onyx. Oh, I'm Sango. And then like, I got it. Well, this is the first time they're actually interacting with each other. So that one makes sense. But I'm pretty sure they've told their names before, right? This is this This doesn't feel like the first time that this has happened, right? I feel like my memory might be wrong, okay? My memory might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that in the last arc, when they sent that bogus like letter of a challenge, when Sango was upset about the fucking like mystery cake or whatever the fuck, right? And they did this whole like, oh, the explorers are sending us a challenge. I'm pretty sure they sent their names there, right? I, maybe, like I said, maybe I'm misremembering. You guys can tell me in the comments, but I could have sworn that they have mentioned their names before. So it just feels weird to have this interaction where they're they're like introducing themselves, like. Onyx was like, Liko of the Explorers, my name is Onyx, don't you forget it. And I'm like, I thought she already knew, right? I thought they were just using the names as a covert, like, oh, we don't want to announce who they are, right? So they all, they kept calling him, like, Onigiri, and then Sango a sandwich, right? Like, I thought that was the whole joke, but I didn't, I don't know. Like I said, maybe it's just me. Maybe I don't, I don't remember, right? Hopefully you guys will tell me in the comments if I'm, if I'm going crazy. Or, or if this is just like the writers forgot, right? <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to the next episode. Liko and Roy going at it uh, in an official battle. The last thing I want to say, and I'm actually upset about one, just one thing in this episode, right? It's the only blip for this particular episode. And it's the fact that Liko passed, right? I don't have a problem with her being able to terrestrialize in the future, right? Because they were, they announced that. Because if, you, if you're in the past, you have to give back the Terra Orb, right? You're not going to get the official Terra Orb, right? So Liko was going to be without the ability to terrestrialize. Which, in a sense, would have put her in a handicap alongside her friends. So I figured they might have done something, right? I had a feeling that as soon as they mentioned that, something was going to happen. But I'm a little upset that they just gave her the Terra Orb. They're like, Grusha passed her because she beat Onyx. I understand this This is like a, oh, well, you saved the school, right? Realistically speaking, she's not the only one that battled here, right? I'm not taking anything away from Liko. Okay, Liko did a fantastic job. So you Liko fans, don't come at me. But it just felt like the writers, like, put themselves in a hole for a bit. And they're like, shit, we, we made it to where Liko didn't pass her test, which means she's not going to be able to have a tail orb, which means she's not going to be able to translate the Pokemon. Whereas Roy and Dot are going to be able to do that. Um, so they retconned it to where it feels like she didn't earn it in the traditional sense. So they have to create this roundabout way so that she's not completely behind her two friends. Right? I That's just what I'm stating. Like I said, don't come at me, Liko fans. I like Liko, but you got to admit... This, this felt off, okay? This felt like they, they had to, like, do some form of retconning or some shit to try to make sure that she's not left behind because she's technically the protagonist. She's the main character of the show, and you can't have her, like, not be able to use the, the primary mechanic of the region when her friends can't. So, I honestly, I don't think it was deserved. But it is what it is. She, she officially passed the implementation test. It wasn't done like everybody else. She's the only one that got this weird ass second chance, right? Uh, and it like it that didn't follow the structure of everybody else. So I do think that was a little off. That's all I'm gonna say. But I'm looking forward to the next episode. Uh, I think I heard some rumors about this one when it came out. Uh, but again, I'm not gonna know until I watch it, right? So we're gonna leave it off there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have been your boy, Source Crossing, and I will see you guys in future videos, streams, shorts, and everything in between.